so happy to get out of there. Like, yeah. I was just happy that we made it. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, it's going to be kind of different. We're going to be telling the story about basically surviving through a Category 5 hurricane, which most of you know it hit the Panhandle in Florida, Panama City, our area, and we tried to vlog as best we could but as you guys probably know it was almost impossible really hectic and but we did get a lot of footage that we're going to put in clips as we talk about it but yeah today we're going to be talking about how we basically survived hurricane michael the clips so, don't do it justice either like no, obviously because they really don't because in the most hectic times we couldn't get obviously we weren't thinking about picking up the camera. We were thinking about hanging on for our life, basically. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay guys, so Monday we found out the hurricane was coming. I do property management for work, um, and basically we just do everything from minor construction to painting. Instead of doing that, all the houses that we manage, we uh, got the houses ready for the hurricane, basically. So, Monday, on my way home from work, uh, I was starting to notice that places were running out of gas. Um, they were saying that they were bringing more gas in, but they were just running out very quickly because people were already in a frantic. So I wake up Tuesday, and we woke up to it being a Category 3. In the beginning, it was really not a big deal to us that live in Panama City because we always get the news report saying, oh, there's a hurricane coming or it never comes and or just, turns. Yeah, or turns and it was just it was not a big deal to us at this time. But now we wake up the next morning and it's growing stronger and it's supposed to be hitting us directly. We haven't had a direct hurricane hit in how long? A long time. It's I been over 20 years they said. So, we have never had it hit directly. We've just had it come like hit corners of us. So, we we were just not prepared at all and we didn't take it seriously so come the next morning go ahead it was tuesday and it was a category three at this point and we were still not taking it as seriously as we should have yeah we weren't taking it as seriously as we should have we did know that a category three is a serious storm i mean any hurricane is a serious storm but i've been through one i've been through two and i've been through three and it just happened so happens to where the places that i were the places, hit yeah, they just weren't hit directly, yeah. and it, you know, it wasn't. It just wasn't serious. So Tuesday, I call my boss. Um, I tell him, "Hey, I was on my way home last night. All the places on my way home were out of gas. Uh, I got a quarter tank of gas, and we don't know what we're doing yet." I was like, uh, "I'll come to work if you can find the place that's got gas over there. If you can do that, I'll come to work for a few hours. But I need to get off early so I can basically okay. get prepare up or just yeah, get us ready for the hurricane." So he was, he was fine with that, so I went in, got, I put a few hours in, and I uh, came home, and um, there was one gas station on the way home that had gas, but there was literally like about 150 cars waiting. So you come home from work, and at this point I didn't even like pack or anything like that. Like I said, we weren't taking it seriously. And so I didn't even know if we were gonna <clears throat> evacuate at this point in time, so I didn't pack anything. You know, I didn't get anything ready and Garrett comes home and we decide, okay, like we should go to the store and at least get some water, some canned goods and stuff like that. And we figured out we were in an evacuation zone, a mandatory evacuation zone. So one of my friends actually offered us to stay at their house where they were not in a surge zone at all. And so we took them up on that offer. We gathered all of our pets, the canned goods that we had and um, you know, just we packed really lightly. We we got some clothes and stuff and we packed for maybe being gone like a day or so. Like we really had no idea. We thought we were gonna be without power for maybe a day and then go back home and it'll all be okay. So we didn't pack as much as we should have, um, but we did go to Publix after Garrett got home and we stayed in the car. You got waters, canned goods, we got some wipes for Wilder, some formula. Um, All the important stuff that we needed. And surprisingly, um, that public still had a good amount of stuff. So um, that, again, we weren't getting worried because the whole public was stocked full of stuff, right. I think, during and, the and hurricane. And we had read posts and stuff where they were saying, like, Panama City was running out of stuff and blah, blah, blah. So up until that point, I was a little worried about, about getting stuff mm -hmm. at this point, you know. But 
when we got there, everything was um, everything was stocked. So I, I thought, you know, maybe it's not as bad as people are saying yet. Maybe just people are trying to make it a little bit worse than it really is. So we weren't we weren't too scared at this point. So we got we got all our stuff, threw it in my truck, and we headed to our friend's house. Which um, is only about like a 40 minute drive from us or so, but they were supposed to be out of the surge zone, so. I mean, they were 72 feet above sea level. We felt pretty safe That's to crazy. say the least. They, we <clears throat> boarded up all the windows and, you know, we took those precautions. Besides one. Yeah, besides one window. We'll and get to that. We took precautions and, you know, we just thought we were just going to hear like, you know, some scary rain wind and it would all be fine power would be out maybe maybe i was thinking maybe the power wouldn't even go out i'm such an idiot and it would all be fine so that really wasn't the case and that's when we'll go ahead and get into that right now we planned for we a, planned for a hurricane party like a bunch of idiots like, yeah we really did we um we were so excited not excited but like we were just excited that we would be you know staying with friends that we at least knew that were out of the surge zone and we would be, you know, fine and cozied up for maybe a few days and it would all be fine. I was, I wasn't even thinking about the aftermath of the power being out, no electricity, no water. I wasn't even thinking about that kind of stuff and I was completely wrong. So we get there, you know, we're having a good time. We're having dinner. We're having dinner. We made our we um, made our bed, we, we did face masks, like we were just having a good time, not really thinking about what was about to happen or the aftermath of anything. We just, we really weren't thinking. And so- We go then, to sleep. Yeah, we go to sleep. We wake up, category four is coming now. Mm -hmm. So we wake up and we look at our phones and we have an alert that says, if you're gonna, basically, it's, I don't know exactly how it was worded, but it said, if you're gonna leave, you need to do so now. And we thought, we well, contemplated. We contemplated for a while and we were like, well, we're already How here. many people are still here? If, if ever if if we're getting an alert now and, be, and now the hurricane 4 is, or category 4 is coming, how many people are going to be on that road trying to get out? And will we, we be didn't want yeah, will we be stuck on the middle of the road before the hurricane comes? And you know, I, we just did not want to be caught in a vehicle when the hurricane was going to hit. Better to be in a Better to be house. in a house and you know that's boarded up and uh, you know as safe as it can be. We didn't know how far we could get. The gas was out and we didn't know how far we could get until we ran out of gas. There was just a lot of factors and so we ended up staying. And that was a mistake. We should have left from the beginning. Next time there's a hurricane, we're going to be the first people, I swear to evacuate no matter if it's a one, two, three, I do not care. We are going to evacuate. I agree. So, um, the hurricane comes around, it, well, we start getting heavy rain around like 11, I mm -hmm. would say. And it start. we were watching out the windows, like everything was fine. The wind the was window, picking up. The window yeah. that we had, the wind was picking up and everything was really fine. It was just like a heavy storm. And so we, we did we still had cell service until yeah. about three hours after the storm. Maybe 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 it wasn't that long, but I mean we still had service for a good amount of time after the storm. So we were able to track the storm as it was coming. So as the rain is coming in and, and the winds are picking up, the storm candles. was still about yeah, we went ahead and lit candles just in case. We got you know, stuff ready got in like stuff the ready. bathtub and stuff like that, yeah. And um at this point the storm wasn't was still I think it was like 16 miles away from us or still or something mm -hmm. like that we could feel I swear the wind was already at easily 40 50 60 miles an hour somewhere along those lines because it was already pulling like limbs off the trees so as it's getting closer and getting closer obviously more and more things are being taken away trees are falling down so it comes to the point to where we're nearing the eye and the eye we were just east Mm -hmm. of the storm. We were basically in the worst part of it. It pushed all that, all all of it just right towards us. First thing that happened actually was in the front of the house they had a water well, mm -hmm. an electric with electrical pump and it had a, you know, like a doghouse looking thing over it and that went away quickly and we kind of knew that was going to happen because it wasn't well put together and it just kind of flew right into all of our vehicles and then, you know, danged them up and banged them up a little bit. So we kind of expected that. So. Um, we went out there, we basically tried to gather everything that we could. Um, there was an outlet connected to one of the sides of the well house, 
and obviously it was wired with you know with Romex, which is a was wiring material. It was basically long enough for the wind to pull it and it to swing right into the windows. It was just perfect length for that to happen. So we were like, we need to figure out a way to cut this so we can bring this piece of material inside so it doesn't break anything and cause more harm. So we're looking around, we're looking around, nothing. There's obviously like, what are you gonna do? Like run back inside, run back, like no. So our friend just grabbed it and just pulled it. <laughs> Big sparks flew everywhere. He basically got lucky. We go back inside and we walk to the back door to see what kind of damage is going on in the backyard. And the fence had basically leveled itself over. And they have a metal fence, so it didn't go anywhere, but it, it the wind basically pulled it right flat to the ground. Um, they had a shed that was tethered to the ground. I don't, I'm not exactly sure in what way, but I think it was hurricane strapped. I think that's normally what you do is you use hurricane straps, but those failed and it actually picked it right up and fell and disintegrated and then took it off piece by piece. So Which was really sad too because my friend had all of her kids stuff in there like memories and toys I think and just a lot of toolboxes tools, and just a lot of important things tools. yeah in there. So that was really sad to see that go. And it was really scary too because at that time we're like, holy crap, the shed is literally disintegrated. Like, what's gonna happen to next? the house? Like, we thought, well, since the shed is gone, what's gonna happen to the house? Like, yeah. like this is scary now at this point. So we could see a little bit of the neighbor's yard also, and then a little bit of their house. And their shed was also gone. I watched their shed get taken away also. They had one that was taken away with the well house that we were talking about. That one was gone way long ago. Um, but their other one, they had a very more sturdy one. That one was picked up, left on its side. Their house is leaking at this point. Yeah, the house is leaking through the vents, through the light fixtures. Just like just several in. areas. Yeah, just pouring out of the out of the ceiling and several several areas of the house. Mm -hmm. Shingles um, are flying into the house. And I don't know if you guys know how shingles are put in, but they are nailed to the to the roof. And to hear the wind whipping across the house is one thing, but then for it to pick up the shingles and rip those nails out of the roof, it was like. Sitting in it, the bathtub, I could feel it on it my It was back. so loud. It was so loud. It was like it was like tree branches were just being pushed across the uh, the ceiling, like just being hit, crushed. You could also hear the ripping of the nails. Like you could just hear them. It was like, like I can't even explain it because it was so it was I just so feel, loud and crazy. I could feel the pressure on my back because we were in the bathtub. I could feel the impact of the shingles hitting the like house. Through the, like through the drywall of the house. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was so scary. What first started happening was the really strong winds and the shingles kept coming off. Yeah, the, the shingles, roof. yeah, that was the first thing. The and shingles were coming off I the was kind of getting nervous at that time because- It was I, loud. I've never heard that before. And so we, us girls, me and my friend, her two babies and Wilder, we all went into the bathroom at this time and um, we had candles lit, we had everything that we needed in the bathroom, so we sat in the bathtub for a while, and then um, the boys were just sitting outside of the bathtub, and then we heard like a really big shatter. Well, and then at, uh, following the shatter was a, was a mind-boggling, whirling sound. It's the wind sucking, yeah. sucking the air. the air out of the house, in the house, whatever. I, I don't know how exactly, you know, the, the technical terms of what was happening, but. So Garrick and the boys went out there and it was the window. It was like a little window in the kitchen. That we was the one that we didn't board up. We didn't we, board it up because, yeah. We, we they, didn't think that. It would be a big deal, obviously, and we, we thought we wanted to be able to see like kind of what was going on. Again, something really idiotic that we'll learn from. But um, yeah, so that shattered and glass was, I, we didn't know what was going on. Us girls were in the bathtub and that was what was really frightening for us because we didn't know what was going on. There was a lot of loud movement, like glass We were shouting everywhere. back and forth, like trying to, fig trying to find something square to put square or rectangular or something that would fit in between the cabinets over the window so where air would stop sucking in and stuff would stop coming in because rain was just pouring in and pouring in so i'm running around the house like a, like a monkey and our friend is holding uh i don't even know what he was holding up against the window but it wasn't anything that was good he was yelling like find something find something so I go into the back hallway and there was some, there was a piece of drywall on the floor and I was trying to figure out where it came from and uh, he was like, that's the attic door. So I just grabbed it, we put that up against it and it worked for a while, but if you guys are familiar with what drywall is and what it's made out of, it's not a very sturdy material. 
Um, it actually just crumbles apart, and if it gets wet, it gets soiled, and it just falls apart. And that's exactly what was happening. Um, so we were like, our hearts were pounding. We had, we didn't have any shoes on. There was glass all over the floor. We had cuts all on our feet. Um, the kids are, we can hear the kids in the background screaming and crying because oh, yeah. we're yelling back and forth. Yeah, in the bathtub on on our part, all three kids were just screaming and yelling, and they were yelling at the same time, and it was really scary. I know that they could feel our stress, me and my friend, because they were just, all three of them were just crying their eyes out, and we were trying to keep them occupied, trying to stay as calm as possible, but that's really hard in a situation like this, especially when the boys are, like, screaming. And, and you don't like, know what's going on. Yeah, we didn't know what was going on, because obviously we couldn't see, and we couldn't get out to look or, or even offer our help because we had the babies, and it was just a lot. So the window, you guys were holding the window, right? Yeah. And so for a long time, might I add. Oh, yeah, it was It was about, I would say it was like an close hour. to an hour. It was yeah. close to an hour that we're holding it there. Okay, so we are holding this glass with the drywall, and we're waiting for the storm to calm down because eventually we're, we know that this drywall is not going to hold much longer, mm -hmm. and then we're really going to be screwed. Like we're, The roof's going to come off. Yeah, basically what happens is when that kind of, when, when a window breaks, and the air gets into your house, it pulls that, it pulls your roof right off. At this point, like as everything's going on, now we're, like, we're, realizing. Oh, now we're realizing like, oh man, like we really should have left. So we're all scared. And eventually I was like, okay, I think the storm has, has calmed down a little bit. So let's try to get outside. We make our first attempt, and as soon as we step outside, that wind picks right back up and almost takes us like away. I feel like it was literally the time you guys were trying to do it, it was like 30, not even 30 seconds you guys had. Yeah, like maybe 30 seconds. And then once we we tried two more times, didn't work out, and finally we got a chance. And we were like, we got to go right now. So we run out to the backyard. We're scrounging through what's left of the materials that the, the hurricane didn't take away. And it just so happened that... Um, the board, the boards that we had left over from what we cut to put over the windows, um, were wedged in between some bookcase looking thing or a toolbox and another toolbox, and they just happened to be right there. So I grabbed one, and as I'm as I'm trying to get back to the house, it's literally pulling me. Like I'm I'm literally holding it like this. I couldn't even hold it to my body because the wind picked back up and it's pulling me away, pulling me away, and I almost let go of it because. I was scared that the that it was literally going to take me with it, but I was able to. I just I held it as tight as I could, and I hold. I just held onto it, and I just walked back with my feet really heavy in the ground, That's so scary. and I was able to get back to the house. We didn't really have much time left to to mess around, so we just ran to the front yard. We basically looked out real quick to make sure nothing was coming. Ran around. I held the board up, and our friend screwed it in. And right thank as, God I didn't see that happening, and we were in the bathroom because. That would have made oh, man. it even more traumatizing for us, but hearing about it is just so scary. It was scary. It was definitely scary. And besides, like, um, just stuff like hitting the house constantly and hitting the boards that we put over the windows, mm -hmm. if we wouldn't have done that, we, we wouldn't be here today. Or, yeah. we no, we just wouldn't be here today if we wouldn't have done that because... During, after that, it was about a few hours that went by that everything was still hitting the house. It was really... The noise was really scary, and we didn't know what else would happen. Thankfully, there wasn't that much damage. I mean, there was a lot of damage, but compared to Everywhere all else. of our families and friends and so many other people that literally lost their whole entire everything. house, everything, we were considered extremely lucky, and that is so scary. But... Hours went on where we were just sitting there and sitting in this room in the bathtub and trying to keep the kids occupied at the same time. We had to hold the kids basically the entire time they were screaming, kicking, and crying. Those of you that have toddlers know that that is really, really hard. And it was because there was glass all over the place and, you know, we wanted to keep them safe. And so those hours went by and finally the storm had stopped and we went outside and just saw... All of the damage and the house that we were in I'm not even kidding you was literally the only house that looked livable livable like they like yeah. they will be able to get their house back in shape and the footage that we did get for you guys those houses I would still technically consider okay yeah because when we went one street and two streets over there was houses that were completely demolished to the ground. Big trees that went straight through the middle of their buildings to where 
you couldn't live there anymore, obviously. Trees on top of cars. Trees on top of cars. Where people's lives were just, you could just People's see lives it. were ruined. We, but, yeah. There was people, there was family sitting outside crying, both cars, trees on top of them, house destroyed, sitting on their porch. The porch was the only thing left. Yeah. Because they had nowhere else to sit, nowhere to go, crying, holding each other. A family of like six, I think it was. So we went through that night with no power. And what happened during this night, we really didn't get on footage because it was the worst 24 hours. It was the worst 24 hours, like, ever. Wilder got sick somehow. And so he was screaming and crying. And it was and hot. It was extremely, miserable. extremely hot. It was, yeah, it was, it was just... Absolutely miserable. Absolutely miserable. You guys that are parents know that when your kids get sick, it's... It's the worst feeling ever. At, like at this time, we were feeling really bad, and I and I still feel bad as parents because I feel like we made the wrong decision. Made the wrong decision, of course, to stay back. And now Wilder's sick, and we have no way to heat up his bottles. We have we're running out of waters. Like we just know that this is this is awful, and we cannot stay here another night. We can't stay any longer with no power. Wilder's miserable. I We literally stayed up that entire night. We hadn't slept in 24 hours just rocking him, trying to get him as comfortable as possible. He didn't sleep. He was just coughing and sneezing and his temperature, he had a temperature. Screaming his head screaming off. Screaming his head off. We have a really fussy baby, so we know how it is whenever, you know, your baby's colicky or fussy, and this was just unlike this any was other like, night. This is was almost like demonic really listening to how he sounded he was in such pain we didn't know if we should go to the hospital but of course there was nothing open. but honestly the there was were evacuated and there was honestly no way to get off the street at this point point. and keep in mind we would have left that night but there was a mandatory um curfew and we couldn't leave they and said they were going to be arresting people if we left yeah so we there was mandatory curfew until 8 a.m the next morning so we make our minds up that okay we need, we need obviously to get, here. to get power. We need to get out of here. We need to get wilder, comfortable and situated. And so we're like, okay, we're leaving as soon as we can at 8 a.m., which is when we could leave. So we basically stayed up the whole night and we planned to go to Tampa at 8 a.m. And might I add, through the night, we ended up staying in Garrick's truck because it was so hot in that house. And we like would crank the air every now and then, but we didn't want to do it too much because we knew that there wasn't going to be gas. And we had to get to Tampa, which was six or seven hours away from where we were. So we were still like extremely hot, but every now and then we would have to crank it because Wilder was dripping sweat. We get in the truck and we head out. And as soon as we hit the main road, it, it all the trees, like the roads were, were blocked. like. And I, they weren't fully blocked. Like we could, you know, some of sometimes we can maneuver around. We can maneuver around them. Sometimes we were in the median. Sometimes we were on the opposite side in the grass. We had to go through the woods once, or like a, you know, basically in the wood line to get around one tree. We went under one. I think we went over one. Um, it was just demolished. Like our whole town, where I and this grew is, up. This is all the way to shore. Tallahassee, yes. you guys. This is all the way to Tallahassee, which I mean, is two hours away from where we are. And, and I'm not trying to say like. Everything was demolished because a lot like some things were still good But like a lot of businesses and a lot of there was gas stations that were destroyed There was a lot of buildings that were destroyed. There was People's car places homes, that were destroyed. Everyone lost a lot of homes were destroyed yeah, Everyone a lot of there's homes. so many people that lost everything that they have and we are considered so lucky that we even made it out of town because there was there was stuff everywhere we couldn't even take the first highway that we we wanted to take and we wasted about three hours out of our time a quarter tank of gas we finally got to a gas station that would accept cash only we had no cash everything was on our card so so at to, that point at that point that's when i got worried i was like yeah. well, we just wasted 30 minutes at this gas station and we just wasted about a quarter tank of gas yeah what are we gonna we gotta just go we gotta go and we gotta head as far as we can and I think eventually we'll hit a gas station. We so didn't we're even driving. know where we were going because we had no cell service. So we're driving on a quarter tank, and we we went a ways. Like we went far. And at this point, like I'm shaking, I, I'm frustrated, I'm being I'm being super negative. Like I, I just was in a, I was in a bad place up here. I was like I gotta stop being negative. After I had to keep telling him to stop being so negative, 
and that we would get through it. But in the back of my mind still, I'm trying to be the positive one, but in the back of my mind, I'm still like extremely scared and I'm agreeing with everything he's saying. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, like if we're not positive, we're not going to get anything out of this. Like we need to be as positive as possible, but still like as a mom, I'm scared to death that we're going to get caught on the side of the road and Wilder is just we're not going to have any formula water or anything. So that was really scary. So I said out loud, I was like, God, we need like, we need a miracle. We need gas right now or we're going to run out of gas. And right as I'm, I mean, maybe within just a couple minutes of me saying that we literally turned the corner. We were running on a corner, turn the corner. And I see numbers on the gas sign. And I see about three more gas stations on on either side and further down and I, I literally and I broke down in tears and food and food was open I literally broke down in tears and like I like I was so happy to get out of there like yeah I was just happy that we made it we weren't using air at this time either so we were all super yes for hot the past still. half hour we were driving with no hair or no air while there was screaming it's I'm about to hot. cry God when we finally found this gas station we're like all right let's crank the air thank God let's get some food let's get fill our gas tank up and just head to Tallahassee or head to Tampa even though we still our cell phone service was still going in and out at this time still and we are two two and a half hours away from where we but were. at this point I didn't even care yeah, like, I no. was like we got gas and food screw the cell service we'll, yeah. we'll ask somebody car, which we way need we need to. to go and we'll head that way yeah so we asked we found the road and we headed there. We finally got service. Tried calling my parents a bunch. I wasn't able to get through to them. I called my aunt, told her that we were that we were coming. And that's where we're at now is Garrick's aunt's house. And we got here last night and we got a shower and I literally felt like a new person. I We looked like we had just came out of the apocalypse and that's literally what it felt like. Survival mode, like it's so crazy. Okay, anyways, so we haven't heard from my grandmother in two days now and she stayed behind in the storm with her two dogs in like a little place and so we haven't heard from her it really worries me and the cell phone services are down and the power is obviously out i don't know if she has access to running water obviously not because the water is down but i don't know if she has access to any water yeah i don't know if she has access to food it's just really it really worries me everyone has gone through something at this point and some are just worse than others and luckily we're, we're blessed really because we're safe and all together and we didn't lose each other or anything like that. One of my friends, she was looking for diapers and formula for her child. And, and wondering if anybody could have any type of formula. You know, babies are supposed to stay on a specific type of formula and she's already at this point to where she doesn't even care, like, care what kind of formula it is just to get the baby And fed. that right there scares it's the crap sad. out of me and that's it's really so sad and I'm so thankful we made the decision to come here whenever we did or else I don't know where we would be right now or what we would have. Like I said, we packed really lightly so it's not like we had much and I'm just thankful we're here because there's so many people that literally lost everything. And I mean, we don't know what we're going home to. He doesn't have a secure job anymore. Like we don't know exactly what we're going home to. So it's unfortunate. At the same time, we're so thankful because there's so many people that have lost their lives, lost their homes, lost everything. So it's just devastating and we really didn't know that like this would this happen. This would happen in this way, like to this extent. It's just crazy. Two days ago, we were just nonchalant about the whole thing and weren't taking it seriously. And now people in our hometown are literally starving. Yeah, our hometown where I was born like everybody had to evacuate the hospitals and they had to evacuate all those patients and there's people that can't even deliver their babies it's so scary because we literally have no idea what we're going home to we don't know if all of our stuff is destroyed if our or home gone, is or taken destroyed or, or stolen i mean we don't live in a great neighborhood so the possibility of all of our stuff being gone when we get back not due to the hurricane, but due to people stealing or it. Or due very, to the hurricane. I mean, or due to the hurricane, but I'm saying if the hurricane didn't take it, then somebody else taking it is a very big possibility. Right now, the only thing we're really stressing about is how are we going to pay bills? Like, yeah, that's so scary. We don't know how we're going to pay bills. When the power's out. Like, I'm we're just not hoping, making income. 
Yeah, and I don't know how I don't know how companies, corporations, I guess, have to be lenient and stuff. Because what else are we supposed to do? But like I mean, we, just... we have rent, we have a car payment, we have we have a credit card payment, we have so many things that are due, and when something like this happens, it really puts a stress on us because we don't know how we're going to pay it. Like, if you're not making money, how are you supposed to pay these things, So you know? the plan is to wait out the weekend. If we, we hear, I'm sure we'll know something by the end of the weekend. If it if it seems like power's not going to be back on anytime soon, then I guess we're gonna we're either ride it out here and I'll get a job here, or it's crazy how you can go from having your life together, you know, and like your home and your jobs and everything to just literally in the blink of an eye mm -hmm. have nothing. And I'm not saying we have nothing because we have each other. We have clothes we have we're like in a home we have food water but I, I'm talking about everybody else in our hometown like our closest friends and family that truly have nothing that truly now have nothing like it's really a blessing that we were able to number one be alive number two be together be together number three even be able to get out of the town because and not be stuck in that situation with our son. I remember on the way here, we're like, are we making the right decision? Because we didn't know if we would, how we would get there, if we were going to run out of gas, or if we were going to have to stay in our truck. And I remember contemplating with you, and we were asking ourselves, should we have stayed? Because at least we were in, like, a building, like, our friend's house, Rather than being in a truck, a hot truck in the middle of nowhere where we don't well, we know really, where we really are. didn't even know like how to get here. <laughs> yeah, because we had no cell phone service and both of us suck at this a sense of direction. So, on a lighter note, we are at Garrick's aunt's house. We're not sure how long we're going to have to stay here. Or like I said, what we're going home to, which is such a scary thought. But we are together and we have air conditioning, power, running water... And we have everything what we more need. could we ask for right now? So we are really, really thankful, and we just wanted to share our story. I hope I put in enough clips in there because, like I said, we weren't able to vlog as much as I wanted. I wanted to vlog, like, the entire day, but it's so crazy how roles switch when things happen. It was impossible. Yeah, it really was. To everybody that's still out there suffering, my heart goes out to you. Prayers go out to you. Um, I hope everything works out for you guys. I hope God is with everybody that's left in Panama City Beach, Panama City. Yep. I hope power gets on as soon as possible, and I hope everybody that's that's suffering gets what they need and is able to make it through this. I'm sure we're missing a lot, but we're so tired, and as you guys can probably tell, we... We haven't slept in the past two days at all. We really haven't, and Wilder hasn't slept. We've been worrying about everybody that's still there. Yeah. I'm so devastated. My body's literally shaking. I have, like, chills going throughout my whole body just thinking about the people that are there right now. And it literally could be us. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.